Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tree here, back with how to map on Sleeping Giant, part six. So as traditional in part six of each of these how to map series and looking at different maps, um, we're gonna be looking at Sleeping Giant in action. So basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be showing you uh, clips of aircraft carriers in action, battleships, cruisers, and destroyers. Um, positioning on the map, how they interact with them, you know, those camping islands we've been talking about uh, on the 6-7 line, um, how ships, different classes interact with the Thunderdome, uh, being the circle with the semicircle with the island in the center, uh, so on and so forth. So I do have two different transitions uh, in between different clips. One's a fade in, fade out. That means it's a different clip, a uh, different battle entirely. But if it's a pixelated transition, that means it's of the same battle. I've just transitioned a bit further into the battle. Um, I've done my best to keep this video as short as possible, but it's gonna be roughly over uh, probably 46 minutes. Um, so I'll try to put uh, like maybe like a key or something in the comments, uh, just where you can go to timestamps of aircraft carriers, battleships, cruisers, destroyers. Uh, just to make your life easier, because um, I don't expect you guys to watch this video all in one go. Of course, if you want to, you're more than welcome to, but if you want to come back to it, um, then hopefully you can use the timestamps that I'll put down in the comments. Um, so I think I have a lot of good content uh, to share with you today and featuring different things, and I hope that it helps you um, in your um, playing when you do find yourself uh, on Sleeping Giants. And also I also have a few players who uh, sent in some of their own uh, clips to me to use. I needed a couple extra ones uh, when it comes to battleships. So uh, first we're gonna be looking at the mini map as traditional. Um, we, I don't personally play carrier very much, so it tends to be more of these um, mini map views. But you can see the Lexington player is moved up to the island at H5, uh, I believe it is. And he's going to be sitting there for a bit until it's time for him to uh, move further up. And that's what's great about um, utilizing that island um, to your advantage. Uh, now I've spe sped this part of the clip up where we can see he's moving out of that, what I would call a second position, being behind the island. And he's going to be moving up more on his flank um, because the opposite flank is uh, vulnerable uh, with the North Carolina over there that will probably be moving down into sea shortly. And so it's really good to see that the uh, Lexington player here is paying attention uh, to the mini-map, seeing what's going on, having the map awareness, and um, we get to defend him here. <laughs> so. And then eventually we'll take out the North Carolina. Uh, next up, we have an FDR uh, from the King Killer 2 in the Dao clan. Um, he sat in his spawn uh, for the beginning part of this battle, and as we've moved up um, securing uh, Delta Cap, um, he has moved up himself, uh, which is great. Um, he probably could have moved up a little bit sooner, but he's doing a good job regardless that he's um, the time between squadrons arriving on the battlefield uh, is going to be much shorter. So he's responding to what he's seeing um, occur on the map. So it's good to see it. Next up, we have a Stark Monster from the 3 in 3 clan and the Shikaku. So, right now, as you can see, he's in spawn. I mean, he's just chilling out there, uh, kind of waiting to see um, what's going on. He's already on, what, as we look at the screen, uh, well, from our team's perspective, the left flank. And it's best for him to sit there because most of our team's forces is over there. So there's no point of him coming uh, over to our flank. So, and that's just fine. And he's sitting there and he's uh, pretty well defended. Uh, this is from the Ender Clan, Cannons Away 8, uh, Implacable. Um, he is paying attention to see what's happening on the battlefield. And so he kind of goes, falls back to the A line. And then eventually he's going to get down to, come down to the nine line. And then he's gonna be moving uh, directly south. Uh, so for himself, he's staying outside that detectability range as the concealment expert uh, for the commanders isn't as good as it used to because of the nerf you get um, in taking that. Um, so he's just going to walk down this line line now, and he's continuing to support us as best as possible. So 
um, and is really enabling us to be able to push up as I'm still was doing suppressive fire back uh, from there. So battleships. Um, so here I'm in the Massachusetts. Um, this is a ranked match. Uh, we've pushed up from the Charlie cap. And there tends to be, uh, I see a lot of battleship players and cruisers doing what this Kansas player is doing. Um, the Odin player did the same and I uh, got some damage on him. Where they come out of the Bravo cap and they're showing a lot of side. Um, and as such, uh, we're able to uh, punish that and take advantage of what's happening here. Um, and then, I think this is a different battle. But um, we've come, we're moving back towards um, Charlie. And we have this Odin here. Um, now this is the same battle. And so we're able to lob shells over this island here. Um, dark, undetected. And so that's good when you're looking for these opportunities. Get these shots off across uh, these open channels here. As it can uh, surprise the enemy, catch them off guard. Um, like how that Odin uh, was showing a bit too much side. But with... The wonky Massachusetts dispersion, uh, we don't get a devastating kill on him. Then here, um, I've moved out of the channel. So kind of talking about those channel breakpoints along these camping islands on the 6-7 line. Uh, where we had this Otago who was um, focused on uh, friendly, looks like Alsace, if I can tell correctly, in the south. Um, but we move out here and we're able to catch him a little bit off guard, but he had his hydroacoustic search detected before he came out. And he's, of course, going to be dumping torpedoes on us, and we get this nice uh, broadside salvo, uh, dev striking him. Well, I guess it didn't dev strike, it just got the high caliber in Citadel. Uh, this is uh, a different battle. We're here, we're in, uh, again, the Massachusetts, and I'm just utilizing this position sitting here. Again, kind of emphasizing that I see a lot of battleship players do this, just like we saw with the Kansas player. And here's the Turpitz uh, player in a different match, uh, doing where they're showing a bit too much side, and so we're able to punish that, get an almost 10,000k salvo. Now, the risk that also you have here, if there's a CV on the enemy team paying attention, um, because you're more in this stationary position, uh, you have um, the Lexington flying in with his uh, dive bomber squad. So, it's going to be interesting as update 10.4 is hit, how this type of strategy will be affected with the Dutch air strike, uh, with the Dutch cruisers. So uh, I guess time is going to tell on that one, how that uh, comes to pass. Then um, we've still been sitting here. Uh, we had this Lee Fantastic, uh, if I said that one right, um, who came across the channel like that. So that means we're going to slow down. Um, and, you know, a destroyer that comes across the channel like that is likely dumping torpedoes. So just something to be conscious and aware of. I'm kind of sitting here waiting to see if this Japayev and this Turpitz is going to push up. The Japayev is aware of our tricks and scheming, so he's just turned more away. However, the Turpitz player um, doesn't seem to be too concerned about us, even though we are detected. Um, he's not able to get salvo on us yet, but he uh, sequence fires his shells uh, behind us at the Kaga. So that means... Um, it's okay for me to sit with this side showing. Uh, so we're going to see if we can get a good salvo in and then turn away. So that's the nice thing about these islands on the 6-7 line. That it feels more um, like you're fighting in between. From the other perspective, um, moving you know, towards this area from the opposite direction, um, I'm moving up to Massachusetts pretty aggressively here at the beginning because there hasn't been, there's only one destroyer and he's not here uh, on the enemy team. But we get to utilize these islands here in the center. Um, in this positioning as we have this uh, Helena and this Seattle um, behind the island here. So we're kind of leading the charge for our team right now and we can kind of do that with having that quick heal. Uh, eventually we get maneuvered more into the islands and we'll finish off this uh, Seattle here. He's not, was just, wasn't able to do very much uh, since we moved up so aggressive. And it's also inspiring our team to move forward. So we're gonna tank a lot of damage in these sequences as you'll see. Um, and we're sitting here, we got the Otago over to the right, and we also have this island kind of helping serve as a buffer zone with that uh, Donskoy uh, off to our port. Then we move up, you can see we're at 1.1 million potential damage at the moment. And again, so still kind of leading the charge here. You can see that we're going through our hills pretty, uh, heels pretty quickly here. 
And now I'm moving up to this uh, next island structure to my right. So you kind of see I'm island hopping here. I'm, I've been using those four islands in the center. You know, it was an enemy destroyer and uh, moving up. But you can see I was looking over to my right, uh, starboard, and there's this Otago. Um, so I was where he was there. I popped this uh, fighter plane and just confirms that he's is indeed in that direction. So we're gonna have to hold the brakes. So if you're not paying attention like this Minnesota player is um, to my port uh, or left um, coming up on me, um, he's not gonna be paying attention to what the Tago's doing. So the Tago is aware, of course, that we are sitting in here. You know, just the fact that he fired his guns, uh, but he's gonna dump his torpedoes, um, not on me. He doesn't have the torp angle to do it, um, but he's gonna dump them on the Minnesota. And the Minnesota is just going to keep sailing a straight line, even though we're just right here I'm detecting this. So that's just one of the vital things that you have to watch out with these channels. Um, is, you know, even, you know, a lot of torpedoes you often see come through these channels, but also when ships can just sneak through um, and get the jump on players. So, but yeah, that Minnesota is going to eat a chunk full of torpedoes there. And we're able to finish them off and we're going to keep going forward. So we're at 1.8 million potential damage right now. And we have this Izumo who's been chunking us pretty well throughout the, the battle thus far. Again, um, I'm pulling up here. I'm stopping. There's this Talon off to my right. Um, and so we don't want to push up past this point right now. Uh, we kind of just want to sit here for a minute. Um, we have our one of our front turrets has been knocked out. So not worried about damage control partying that even though mine is on cooldown right now we're out of heals um just now over two million uh, potential damage and so we've been mostly leading the charge in this flank helping our team push up um doing pretty uh, effective damage but it's rather amusing that the alaska player on the team is telling me to push and <laughs> have been the whole match <laughs> um so yeah just utilize um this islands uh, island hopping especially when you're in brawling battleships um, so now it's just one uh, enemy ship left, and I'm not entirely sure why I threw this one in, but this kind of shows you uh, if you're a destroyer, you're running away, you get lit up by radar, um, smoke isn't going to help you. Um, but we get lucky with the dispersion there uh, and knocking him out. All right, so we're going to be looking at uh, Midnight Phoenix 07 here from the K-Pop clan. Um, he submitted this clip to me as I realized I didn't have too many battleship clips. Um, he's here in a ranked match in the Georgia, um, pushing up at the start of the match, um, being pretty aggressive, uh, as he uh, noted uh, when he sent this in. Um, but you can see there is a Seattle utilizing the island there, and he knew he was there. Um, so that's why he had the guns all facing right that direction and just completely death strikes him. Um, so the Seattle was a little brave um, in backing out <laughs> for him to get that strike on there. So basically, um, you know, he just screwed the enemy cruiser there. Next, he's moving up on this Oland um, who is going to have fun and decide uh, to ram uh, Midnight Phoenix. So uh, Midnight Phoenix is going to be a nice little achievement out of this. But what I like about what Midnight Phoenix is doing is here is he's just causing uh, just havoc uh, for the enemy team here. I'm doing a lot of damage distracting them. It would have been nice to see the low Yang player actually move up um, on the Iowa player because he would have easily been able to do that with deep water torps. But of course he just hides in the channel uh, while Midnight Phoenix um, is doing uh, all this devastation. Uh, naturally Midnight Phoenix isn't going to win, especially since the Iowa has his broadside. But he is going to do a lot of damage um, before he gets taken out here, so uh, really well uh, played. Um, and the deciding factor, of course, is his team stepping up um, to finish this off. So um, just he just threw a wrench in their plane, so that, that's another way you could see <laughs> of playing that. Uh, then from um, my own clan, uh, Warmack uh, Invasion, uh, ADF clan that I'm in, uh, he's here in the Palmer, and he's uh, moving off to the one line towards this island, kind of angling uh, on the EF line. And he's um, pushing out uh, this way. And they have this Kagero player, looks like he's AFK. Um, but what's nice is seeing, you know, he, he since he is on the flank, um, his um, 
teammates get to utilize more of the island of the Thunderdome while he kind of works on this outer flank here. And so we're going to speed it up here. Um, again, he's just working, he's, he's forcing the battleship players off. For some reason, it seems coming from this direction tends to work out better for the opposing team versus the opposite direction. Um, so he's just able to do, again, a lot of damage here and moving up. And one of the things that he's also going to be able to do in pushing up here once he slaps this enemy Palmer in is, is you can see that Ibuki uh, cruiser. That's a typical cruiser positioning um, spot where they like to be at. And so with Warmack pushing up, he's just compromised the Ibuki's position. The Ibuki is no longer safe there. Ibuki can't push up. Um, all they can do really now is just run. So uh, he's been able to unhinge uh, the enemy team from their positions over here. So, uh, working out quite nicely here uh, for him to be able to do this. So, that's kind of one of the things with Sleeping Giant is you're looking at being able to force the enemy team out of their position um, with not what you expect. So you get to see two brawling examples between Midnight Phoenix and Warmack Invasion here uh, and what they're each able to do here on Sleeping Giant. Moving on to cruisers, um, we're going to be working from the Bravo cap place first. Um, so I didn't move up too far. You can see that we have those uh, four destroyers uh, on each team. So moving up would be a bit too aggressive at this point until we find out where uh, the enemy destroyers are positioning. Note we've lost a destroyer right in front of us, so that has means we have no screening uh, for torpedoes. And before the torpedoes even popped up, um, I'm asking this Musashi player to get back and like, hey, there's torps are going to be coming. And as I'm typing it, there's torps pop up. Um, so that's just one of the risks. You're going to see how we have some matches with four destroyers or just some here in Sleeping Giant with one. And so it really op opens up different opportunities. Um, here, uh, we end up uh, detecting this uh, Kitakaze. And since we're the first uh, ship to be detected on the enemy team um, with the battleships on this, we're actually going to pay dearly uh, for this just to get that one salvo or two salvos off on the Kitakaze player. Um, so I'm already backing up. And the enemy team is going to be pushing uh, on this flank. They're doing the, you know, that CB push. But what's nice when you stay in this position along this island, um, this peninsula, you can really abuse it. So I'm in the Buffalo and I'm working to try to get all uh, four turrets on this enemy Georgia pushing up. We've got the armor piercing loaded. Um, so now the Georgia realizes uh, he's in a really bad position and he's gonna start turning out, which means he's gonna be showing broadside to uh, the Massachusetts and what I believe is the Iowa uh, up on the seven line. And he's got his guns focused on me. I'm trying to continue back up, get around this island um, where I won't take much damage, hopefully, if any at all. We take a little bit, not too much. Um, but at once this Massachusetts uh, spider plane goes down, then uh, we should be sitting here dark. Now, no, I'm really only able to do this because there's no one on the enemy team uh, through the one to six line. They're all here on this flank. Uh, granted, I'm not sure exactly where this Baltimore player is, so I've been paying attention to him. So we're able to continue um, to position here and um, throw HE into them. The Massachusetts has also chosen to disengage just because of our positioning here. Um, speeding this up, uh, one of the good things too is you also get this island. So and now I have the island, the second island between me and the Georgia player. And he's, I think he's working to get outside my firing range. Uh, our team's been a bit split in their focus on who should be priority target here. Um, but once he moves out of my firing range, then I can freely fire and I won't be detected. So I'm going to continue to back up here, utilizing this island even more. And you're going to see there's this dip here where our rear turrets uh, fired through successfully. And they've still pushed up really far forward. And again, we're just holding this position. Um, it's really easy when you're in this uh, situation to just run back to the A-line when you're in a cruiser when the battleships are first uh, pushing up. But being able to be an anchor in this position uh, provides us a lot of opportunities. Um, also for the fact that, you know, we're not the only ship over here on this flank fighting um, as our uh, Iowa player is still out there uh, taking these guys on. But we're going to lose him here shortly. So the Massachusetts goes down, then we're able to switch focus fire to the Georgia. 
And again, we're kind of backing up here and we're just trying to set fires. So that's really, you can use this on the different islands um, through the six, seven line chain uh, to work really to your advantage. Um, so yeah, just don't be afraid to take a stand and fight, but you know, with these American cruisers uh, particularly, and um, they work really well in this fashion um, that we're able to uh, put out this punishing damage and the enemy Georgia is unable to do anything about it because we're undetected and um, the Masashi player knocks him out. So here's a different style cruiser uh, going from American to um, British. So we're in the tier nine Neptune uh, tech tree. We've had to push up out of our smoke because of the torpedoes fired. Um, but you can also see where this Edinburgh, Ed Edinburgh, not exactly sure how to pronounce that ship's name. So yeah, we're both, um, where he's really tucked into the island. Um, so he's able to use that to his advantage and uh, being able to stay dark. Um, but granted, we do have this uh, enemy destroyer that's working on our flank. So we've taken him out and now I've moved up to those four central islands because we don't have uh, really any other destroyers bothering us right now. Um, and being able to utilize the smoke here in this island, um, we can put effective damage out on this enemy Iowa. So again, you're being able to utilize these islands, especially when there's uh, no destroyers around uh, right here is really helpful since, you know, there's not a, a huge uh, gap in these channels per se um, around these four islands. So it can take a lot of torpedoes um, that get fired. Um, so yeah, so you saw us do it in the Massachusetts and so now you're seeing me do it in the Neptune. Uh, this is in the Baltimore. Uh, I just want to show that this is a one destroyer matchup and we're actually able to sit here um, completely dark. I'm just firing uh, with HE. Uh, I realized I probably actually could have gotten both turrets on uh, enemy targets here. But you can kind of see that the Iowa's there, the Palmer's there, we're setting fires, and we're just being able to do that basically for free right now, as we also have this Alaska um, just to my left. Um, so we're being able to utilize this position really well. There's no need for us to rush up forward. We'll just sit here, uh, keep firing HE uh, every uh, 10 seconds on enemy targets. This is from a different perspective, so if you're coming up from Charlie now, uh, Charlie Cap, where we're able to utilize, again, this island. Um, there's three destroyers uh, per team, um, but so far have been uh, dark, um, undetected firing here. So a little bit later, we get to see this uh, Monarch and then also enemy destroyer pushing out here. And I'm inching out very slowly. You can already see I already have it in reverse. I'm trying to get a good uh, armor piercing salvo. We had that Cossack, uh, Cossack that was just here a moment ago, so I go and pop my radar. There he is. And so we're going to go ahead and already start reversing because we know more than likely that the Cossack has fired um, all four of his uh, torpedoes. And so we want to be able to avoid that. We also have our hydroacoustic search up. So this is an example of being able to utilize um, the islands there and using that channel gap um, to be able to pull out and get some uh, effective fire uh, on the enemy team. Um, from that position. So a little later, um, I'm, I push up even further. So now there's this kind of little cove uh, here at this island where we can move up here and we can actually fire across the map into the Thunderdome area. Um, and so we're just taking from position to position moving up here. I didn't fire my guns when I was open in that channel. I waited to fire until I was back behind here. I'm pretty sure the Kostik is uh, too close uh, for me to get my shells over, so that's why I'm firing at the further destroyer. Uh, moving up on, uh, I just want to illustrate, I have my guns all focused down this channel. Um, so if the Cleveland or the FDG were to pop up, I already have all guns focused and trained uh, with armor piercing loaded. So that's just something you need to be mindful of. So we're gonna move up even further here uh, where we've moved up on the Cleveland. Um, he's just kind of out circling around. Um, so being able to inch around this island and get the surprise salvo off on him is uh, quite nice. Uh, so for now, for them, uh, the Bravo cap is, um, it's not safe for them anymore. And I'm checking my side there, making sure that no ships in the Thunderdome cap, enemy ships would be able to have a salvo on me since I am pretty much showing broadside. But we're just far enough up um, where that's not going to be an issue or a risk for us. 
So again, you get to utilize the islands uh, and as defensive positions, but also you get to use them offensively uh, to your advantage, uh, where that Cleveland player really wasn't using it more to his advantage per se there. Then we're going to transition uh, again uh, into the, the Buffalo. And this is where I make a mistake. So your superstructure can actually be detected here, um, right off this peninsula in front of me. Um, I'm wanting to move up because I think the Palmers uh, got this Massachusetts distracted. But we get detected uh, right here, and this Alaska already has his guns facing this direction. So my goal is, not, oh, I need to turn um, to port now. Um, but when I do that, I raise my left citadel. So he's just going to delete us. So that's the <laughs> risk uh, when you're moving up from these islands like that. I was being pretty gutsy there. Um, so I didn't help out my team <laughs> with making that decision because I wasn't expecting to be detected um, while moving up. Um, here um, in the Buffalo, and I have this Petropavlovsk player with me. And we're just sitting here utilizing our... Uh, radar, mine's on cooldown, and we get to uh, smoke shot on the Friesland, knocking him out. He was pretty low on health. But me and this Petropavlos player, we're kind of rotating back and forth. I'll pull up, he uh, takes some fire, I'll reverse heal, he pulls up, takes some fire, he pulls back heal. And so we're just focusing on just sitting in this position. Now you can also at times be uh, have these enemy ships like this uh, Jean Bart player is doing where they're pushing around from you, either on Bravo or on Charlie Cap. And so we saw him coming, so we positioned ourselves well. We take minimal damage there uh, because our aim angled pretty well. Uh, our belt took it uh, rather well. If it was larger caliber guns, I'm not sure how well we actually would have fared there. But you're actually gonna see me in this um, Buffalo player um, duel here. Now there I show a little bit too much side. He may have raised uh, his shot a bit more. Um, but that's um, the point. An important point here is when you have an enemy player um, do this to you, that you need to work, focus on staying angled and doing as much as you can to be able to mitigate any damage that you take. Um, otherwise, if you just sit broadside when an enemy player comes out, you're really at a disadvantage. Um, so, of course, we have our team helping us here um, and dealing with this Jean Bart. Um, otherwise, I don't think we would have survived. Um, but we actually get pretty lucky here that um, we're going to be able to um, take him out. So you just have to be mindful of those islands of how enemy ships, uh, all clad, battleships, cruisers, destroyers will work up um, that six line on the back side of the islands um, and try to catch you off guard like that. So if you're not paying attention to your mini map, um, you know, I would have just been screwed sitting there um, and uh, probably not thinking straight. Um, so we had the, now we have a Friesen player. Uh, who's moved into Charlie Cap. So we're just going to kind of use this to stay dark, uh, maneuver around in. I'm going to pop Hydro Acoustic Search when I come out here, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to detect him. Yeah, he's right there. And that's one of the things with a, if your team does, like my team's pushed up to Bravo, um, with the BC, CB push, you also have to defend the cap uh, behind you because the enemy team will just circle in as your whole team moves up. So that's that's basically what we've done here. And so then we knock out uh, the Friesen player. And actually our secondaries are going to get the kill. Um, so uh, rather amusing here. And then we get to take uh, Charlie cap as I do survive this fire. Um, here's an example in a different class, uh, Neptune. Um, as you can see, most of our team is elected to go towards Alpha Cap, uh, where myself and this Fletcher, um, we're I'm t talking to him in chat saying, hey, we just need to kite away, we need to defend, um, we need to play this flank cautiously, because we're not going to be able to hold this flank. Um, so I'm already going, working to circle around this island to my right, but we're going to go ahead and dump some torpedoes since these are 10 kilometer torps. As you can see, the, uh, the Fletcher player didn't uh, heed my advice. So now my goal is basically kite away, distract the enemy team. So what we're doing here with this Don Sky uh, is we're uh, leading him on a bit. Um, what he doesn't know is that uh, my Georgia uh, teammate is pushing up and is going to have a pretty decent side, uh, broad side to be able to fire into him. So you can kind of see me look over to see, oh, when, when's it coming, when's it coming. Um, so we're just working to slow down the enemy team here. 
and he takes a massive hit there um, and then we're gonna be able to finish him off a little later in the battle um, actually just turned in here randomly but then there's these torpedoes um, but we're still distracting the enemy team so you know we had the Fletcher here we had the Palmer in here we had the Kansas we had the Iowa and we're just letting we're buying as much time as possible for our team to move from alpha cap um, you already see that our Massachusetts player is moving to their uh, Bravo cap and we're just buying time we're distracting them for as long as possible so when you find yourself in this type of position where most of your team doesn't actually uh, go for the CB flank um, then you need to be playing more cautiously and how can you distract and live uh, long enough for your team to be able to move out of the A cap zone um, and then back you up at your ca uh, Charlie cap or if they circle around to Bravo cap. So just keep that in mind. Um, so moving to the Thunderdome uh, being A cap. Uh, I have my radar up. We just have it up automatically coming up here to see if there's any destroyers. We don't want to be caught off guard coming out around this point right here. There's not the uh, enemy destroyer has gone to the other side of the Thunderdome, but we did catch the uh, enemy buffalo, who's now dead. Um, and now we have this Jutland player. Now this is a huge risk uh, for a ship like the buffalo, uh, for myself being in here, because I don't want the Jutland player to just come right around the island and just torpedo me to death. Um, what I want to do is I want to actually take the fight to him. Uh, but he's really good, and this was still just really bad position for him to be in overall. A cruiser with a higher DPM is able to defend uh, in a situation better like this. And this Jutland player is single launches his torpedoes, so we're not going to be able to do much. So we're gonna we're gonna lose the fight here in Alpha Cap. So just be mindful if you're doing this um, that it's hard to defend Alpha Cap when you are. Um, a cruiser in this position when you have something like uh, you know a destroyer that's been able to push in um, and take you out. Um, and then here again, uh, one of the things that I shade with cruisers is that sometimes you have destroyers like we have this Jetland player here on my team who's running up along the five line and then he's going to uh, dive into Alpha Cap, and I'm trying to stick with him for as long as possible in case an enemy uh, destroyer pops up. We have the HE loaded, uh, all guns focused on that zone. So when you're able to help support your teammate like this, um, it's quite nice, only, although we can only do it for so long. I'm gonna speed the clip up and we're gonna go around the ring of the Thunderdome here. And our Jetland player is actually going to catch uh, an enemy destroyer off guard uh, over here, uh, being an enemy Ognavoy. So we pop our hydro acoustic search, uh, we've got our radar ready to go. And so we're going to get these salvos off. And so that's really nice, uh, you know, as a destroyer player with, for the Jutland to just push instantly to the opposite side of the cap from where he entered um, helps us both to be able to knock out this Ognavoy player. So don't just only take note of what I'm doing here in the cruiser, but also what the Jutland player is doing um, as that was really beneficial and helped us uh, to secure this kill. And then that's going to enable me to move up into uh, Alpha Cap here shortly. And this should be the salvo that kills him. Okay, so now going into the Thunderdome. Um, I've got armor piercing loaded, and you can use being in the Thunderdome um, to catch shots off where the parts of the island are low enough like this. I'm hoping that I get a big strike in on him with this AP salvo, um, but I ended up shooting a little too high, unfortunately, as that would have been really nice. Um, have done some uh, pretty chunky damage. Now there's another low part in the island uh, coming up here and you can see that I'm getting ready for the next shot. So just being able to utilize the Thunderdome like this to help your teammates on the outside of the Thunderdome is really helpful. Don't isolate yourself in the Thunderdome, but also think how can you be helping your teammates outside the Thunderdome. Uh, ironically, the last salvo here is there's you know, that lower dip in the island. Uh, that's gonna be the one where we get the most damage in on him as we're going to be able to get a citadel in on him here, I believe. Yeah. And now we're moving towards Charlie Cap, where we're going to support our uh, friendly battleship down to the south. Um, this is an example coming from the north of uh, the A, the north of Thunder Cap. We have this Moskva pushing up, so I want to get more into a kiting position here. Uh, unfortunately, my battleship's 
both also decided that they should be kiting away here too, where the key will be here shortly. So we're trying to put as much uh, damage in on this Moskva. Being as he's basically bailing and he's going to be able to exit and he's going to be able to go into the Thunderdome before we're able to kill him. So that's something he did, um, played really well here uh, and used to his advantage. Um, yeah. So now we are going to turn back in and we're going to try to take more of a defensive position along the Thunderdome. Note how I'm sitting here, there's a battleship further in the back who's uh, firing HE at me, but we don't take much damage from that salvo. And this ended up being terrible because uh, the Palmer and the Key uh, that were with me, or maybe it was a Bismarck, I can't tell from the mini-map, uh, basically left me out to hang, to dry here. There's going to be three battleships that push up on me. I die. It's really gruesome. You don't want to see it. CV also takes it. So that's a really bad position it ends up being. Um, here I am in the Kosik. I, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, uh, correctly now. Where we were basically diving for the Thunderdome cap, and we had this Kitakaze we were able to out detect. And I don't want to engage firing at him yet. I'm going to turn in here and I'm going to pop smoke uh, to disengage from him because I want to go dark. And we're able to use that here to our advantage since he took more of the central uh, five line pushing up. Now he's pushing in on me, which is rather um, aggressive for him. He popped smoke and now he's um, taking it on me again, but we're able to hold this position, we pop another smoke. We have hydroacoustic search up and the Yugamo player is gonna be able to help us um, knock out this Kitakazi player. So basically I'm, I'm more or less controlling, dictating um, this engagement here in the Thundercap um, because I continue to kite away from him. Every, if he wants to push into me, I'm already at an advantage um, as a destroyer player. Um, and then a little later, uh, we have this Izumo, enemy Izumo. We're now, since we're in the Thunderdome, again, we're trying to focus on how can we focus firing on ships outside the Thunderdome. So we're able to get some nice HE salvos in on this Izumo. I'm hoping to start a fire. Um, so just basically harassing him, uh, distracting him, uh, if we're able to do any uh, said such thing here. And we have our Yugumo player who's flanking out, so I'm going to go ahead and push uh, through the cap. Um, this is a different battle uh, where we have this hipper pushing in, and right now I'm dumping all these torpedoes. I don't expect any of them to hit, but I'm basically uh, what I refer to as gatekeeping. Um, I don't want the hipper to push in on the cap and torpedo rush uh, Arjan Bart. So he's turning away. He, I knew he had his hydroacoustic search up. Um, so he's gonna turn out and we're able to um, just help back up and support our team here in the Thunderdome cap since there are three of us in here. Um, looks like the enemy, or our CV was uh, helping as well. And despite him having hydroacoustic search up, um, he's still going to take a torpedo here. And we get to pop a smoke um, and help out uh, our cruiser here, uh, our friendly hipper. A little later in that battle, um, there's only uh, myself and a Lexington player left. And I was talking about in a shorter clip, these um, two small islands here. If you find yourself in this type of situation, um, I'm being able to just park behind one of these islands and uh, farm this uh, North Carolina with these HE salvos. Um, our Lexington player, is, he's moved up further away. The enemy CV player is coming on me, so we'll go ahead and pop smoke. So it's going to help us stay dark for a bit. And we're going to nose out um, on the both sides of this island and dump torpedoes on this North Carolina. So just know that you have these islands here that you can utilize in this type of fashion. So next we're going to look at uh, a clip of myself in the gearing. Uh, again, on the Thunderdome flank where I'm moving up um, to this island here on the 1-2 line. And we have this uh, enemy uh, Italian battleship. And I think he's going to go for the Thunderdome. Uh, and so I dumped torpedoes, expecting him to do that maneuver. And then I'm pushing up here on the enemy Hindenburg. And I'm going to position myself closer to this island so I can start firing on the Hindenburg um, undetected. So basically securing this island for... Uh, my team um, and being able to hold this position 
um, and just harass the Hindenburg. Maybe we can set some fires in on him here. And it's nice torpedo angles as well. Uh, a little later, um, I had been defending the backside of this cap. This is the same battle. We had this Des Moines. This is the second torpedo I've hit on him. But you can actually see our CV player in the Richthofen has actually just entered the Thunderdome. So he's really at risk and there's nothing I'm able to do here. The one thing I actually would have critiqued myself to do is dive into the cap, uh, to the Thunderdome. And I would have been able to help defend um, our Richthofen player better. And also been able to torp gatekeep, uh, prevent the Demorne from coming in, unless he decided to take a chance and risk. Um, so the Richthofen player probably moved up a little too early. We had a lot of teammates here, but they've all left. And so now the back door of the Thunderdome cap um, is uh, is vacant. So yeah, that, that was not pretty for the Richthofen player. Moving to the BC uh, flank, um, you can see I've already dumped torpedoes. I'm in a kiting position. I don't have any teammates with me. The IO is coming back. And I talk about how you should just uh, dump torpedoes in this channel regardless, even if you don't detect a ship. And uh, the Colsec has a minute, just over a minute torpedo reload time. And we're gonna get lucky with one of the torpedoes here. And we're gonna get first blood on the enemy Benson. Um, so again, just be mindful that this is a torpedo alley and you should utilize, be aware of torpedoes as I have my hydro acoustic search up and also yourself dumping in torpedoes. So same battle, I've fallen back further. Uh, enemy Brindisi is pushed into our cap. Now my goal is just to defend, get resets. And like I was in that Neptune um, play earlier, I'm basically just trying to slow down the enemy team, keep them distracted for as long as possible so that my team will one, get out of A cap, there's still some players in there, um, and two, that they can move to Charlie cap um, and take care of it. And even later on into the battle, you can see that both the Brindisi and the, I think, is it Iowa, um, are pushing up on me. And I've been able to keep them distracted for this long. So it's helped let our points tick. I've denied the Brindisi capping because I kept resetting him, so he just decided to abandon the cap. Going to a different battle, um, one of the things I've discussed with destroyers is focusing on winning the outside flank here on the 9-10 line. Uh, and so this uh, enemy destroyer has pushed in on us. My Zed, um, can't tell what number that is. Um, he's taken the inside, so he's able to screen torpedoes over there, but I'm focusing on this outside and I'm denying enemy uh, any enemy destroyer being able to push in uh, and uh, expose or get uh, torpedoes in on my team uh, in the cap. Um, then my, him and myself, uh, we've won the flank, you, as you can see, and now we're moving up harassing. We're kind of wolf packing here. Um, we're going to harass the Georgia player. I'm hoping to utilize the island in front of me to make a torpedo run um, on the enemy Musashi. Here I want to focus on the mini map. Um, I was talking about how the ships like to come around the island. So you can see the Missouri and the Kitakaze at Bravo. Uh, the Missouri wasn't paying attention to the minimap and realized he's in a vulnerable position. Kitakaze player just uh, pops his torpedo reload booster and he's gonna dump a bunch of torpedoes into the Missouri. So that's again, one of the things that you have to be mindful of that uh, destroyers, cruisers, battleships like to use that six line um, to sneak up on uh, your, uh, like your teammates um, and be able to put them at risk like this. Um, like you saw with the Jean Bart when I was in the Baltimore earlier as well. Um, from the opposite side, moving up, um, I'm with I'm in the Colsec again, and I have a Lightning player with me. Um, I'm we're breaking off. I'm gonna go dive into the cap. He's gonna move off to the right flank. Again, what we've I've emphasized here. So we're able to support each other well here. We're not super far apart. Um, have hydroacoustic search up as I move into um, the cap zone because you'll often find a lot of torpedoes here. So the lightning is going to run into enemy uh, Ostrogotland and our CV is fantastic in supporting us in this battle. So now the lightning's already back with me. He takes out the enemy Benson um, and we still have this uh, enemy uh, German destroyer that me and him are going to be working over now. And again, uh, our CV player was really phenomenal at helping support us here. He's able to do some damage in, on this uh, enemy Z23. 
if the number is appearing correctly on my screen, uh, if I'm able to read it. Um, but we just keep harassing. So we've been able to wolf pack, we've been able to back each other up um, and just being able to utilize this position. So we're gonna focus on knocking out the destroyers and that's gonna allow the rest of our team to push up as you can kind of see they're on the, the H line. Uh, but we do have one battleship with us, uh, or cruiser that is, in Alaska out on the flank. So that's the power of just working with your teammates, um, destroyers, in these different positions. So I hoped you uh, liked this video. I hope you learned something from talking about carrier positioning, battleship positioning, cruiser positioning, destroyer positioning. Um, as my goal is to do my best to be able to help you guys kind of understand um, how Sleeping Giant works, um, one from first-hand experience, and also a shout out to um, Midnight Phoenix and Warmack and Vision for sending me some additional clips in for battleships, just being able to illustrate some different points to you here on Sleeping Giant. So uh, the next map we're going to be doing, we're going to drop down probably to a lower tier map, um, as you'll find out next Monday what map that will be, and we'll take on the next map. So now that means we finished uh, Greece. Uh, we finished Sleeping Giant, um, and now we move on to our third map. So if you have thoughts or feedback that you want to let me know on how you felt like this series has gone so far, please let me know in the comments whether that is positive feedback um, or constructive or negative feedback. Um, if you do share negative feedback, I just uh, ask that you share um, just some helpful input on what I could be doing better um, with this How to Map series. Um, as this... Uh, particularly part six of these videos, um, take almost more time than the meme compilations um, that I do with these many different clips. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you haven't already subscribed, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Until next time, take care.